So we're going to have multiple different ways to solve the same types of problem. Why do we need multiple different ways? Well, sometimes things don't graph so nice. What if the y-intercept is a fraction? It's going to make graphing kind of tricky, isn't it? So that's when we might use something like substitution or elimination. Now, what was just handed out to you is a little cheat sheet. It has an example up here at the top. Here's a system of equations, and it's got step-by-step step what's being done to solve the problem, okay? So if you need explanation as to how to go through it later, look at your cheat sheet because that will help you, okay? So I'm going to start with this one right here. 2x minus y equals 8, bless you, and x minus 8y is equal to 4. So when I have a system of equations, I have two equations, and this substitution method means that at some point, I'm going to take something out of the equation, and I'm going to substitute or replace with something else. So here's my first step on that sheet. It says something about taking your equations, pick one of your equations and get one of the letters by itself. Now the easiest letter to get by itself is going to be a letter that is almost by itself already, meaning that it does not have a number in front of it. And if at all possible, it's positive. So does that exist in either of my equations? Yes, it actually exists in two places, here and here, but only one of those is positive, so I'm going to take the one that's positive. I could take the one that's negative, it's not a huge deal, but life's going to be easier if I get the positive one. So I start off taking that equation, and I'm going to get that x by itself. How do I get it by itself? Mm hmm? Add 8y to both sides. So I have x equals 8y plus 4. So far, so good? So what did I do here? I just got x by itself, and I now know that x equals 8y plus 4. So that means if I see an x, I can replace it with 8y plus 4, because that's what it equals. So I'm going to take the other equation now, not the one I just used, the other equation, and I'm going to take out the x from that equation. So that equation is 2x minus y equals 8. Does that make sense? I took out the x and I put parentheses. What do you think I'm going to put in that parentheses? 8y plus 4. 8y plus 4. That's my substituting part. I took out the x. I'm replacing it with 8y plus 4. At this point, I should be down to either only x's or only y's. If I still have an x and a y in my equation, then I did something wrong. Chances are I probably plugged it in for the wrong letter. So how can I solve this equation? Distribute, so 16y oh, plus 8 minus y equals 8. And 16y and negative y are on the same side of the equal sign, so I can just add those. Gives me 15y plus 8 equals 8. Now what would I do? Subtract 8. So 15y equals 0. Divide by 15, and what does y equal? Zero. Now, do you remember what my answer is supposed to look like from the homework last night, if you did it? No. My answer is an ordered pair. Remember, it's the point where they cross. If I were to graph them, it would be the point where they would cross. What did I just find? I found the y value of where they cross. 
So I picked one equation, got a letter by itself, and then substituted into the other equation and I got one answer. How do I find the last answer? I take this and I go back up here to where I had one by itself, and I'm gonna plug in zero for y. So x equals eight times zero plus four. What is eight times zero? Plus four. So my answer is the point four zero, meaning if I took those and I graphed them, they would intersect at the point four zero. So, so. Moderately mean. Okay. Let's try this one. Seven x plus seven y equals seven, and negative four x plus two y equals eight. Now, what did I say about the letter you want to get by itself? It should be what? Smaller. Should not have a number in front of it, and it should at all possible be positive. Well, all these have numbers in front of them, don't they? <coughs> but does it look like one of them I might be able to get rid of the numbers? The first one right here. If I took that equation. 7x plus 7y equals 7. Let's say I wanted to get x by itself. If I wanted to get x by itself, what would I need to do? Subtract 7y. Subtract 7y. So that means 7x equals negative 7y plus 7. And now what would I do? Divide, uh, divide both sides by 7. Divide everything by 7. So that gives me x equals negative 1y plus 1. Why did I know that those numbers were going to disappear? Because I knew I was going to have to divide by 7, and they'd all divide by 7 nicely. So I have x by itself. That's what I'm substituting. What do I do now? I take the other equation, and which letter am I taking out and replacing with parentheses? I'm replacing the x with parentheses. So negative 4x plus 2y equals 8. And what do I put in that parentheses? Negative y plus 1. So how do I solve this? Distribute. Negative 4 times negative y is 4y. Negative 4 times positive 1 is negative 4. I also have a plus 2y equals 8. Okay, do I have some like terms? 4y and 2y is 6y minus 4 equals 8. What now? Add 4. Add 4. 6y equals 12. Divide by 6, and what does y equal? Do you see why we spent all that time solving equations at the beginning? Because that's like the easy part of this problem. Okay, so again, my answer is an ordered pair, and I just found the y value, so that's what would come last in that ordered pair. How do I find x? Plug it in. Plug it in where? back where I had x by itself. So x equals, watch how I plug this in. There's a negative sign and then my parentheses for what I'm plugging in. So negative parentheses two. That means negative two plus one, which is what? Negative one. So my answer there is negative one comma two. Questions there. Okay, let's see if I can make it any trickier. You ready?
This isn't actually trickier. Why not? Because there's already a letter by itself. So I can go straight to substituting, right? Yeah. So I take the other equation, 3x minus parentheses equals 6, and because it's the y that's by itself, that's what I'm replacing with 3x minus 6. Yeah? Yes. What's going to happen? 3x minus 3x plus 6 equals 6. Uh-oh, I have a problem. What's the problem? Uh, the x minus the x the My x's cancel out, don't they? What's left over? I have 6 equals 6, right? I have a 6 on the left and a 6 on the right. Is that a true statement? Yeah. If I have $6 and you have $6, we have an equal amount of money, right? Yeah. So that's a true statement. If that's a true statement and all of my letters have canceled out, infinitely many solutions. What situation was that? That was if you graphed it, what happened to the lines? They ended up being the exact same line. Okay. All right. Number four. Let's see. Negative 5x plus y equals negative 9. Negative 15x plus 3y equals 8. Is one of the letters by itself yet? Uh, no. No, so I got to do that, don't I? Yes. So which one should I get by itself? The one on top. Negative y in the first equation, right? Yes. So I'm going to take this first equation, negative 5x plus y equals negative 9. And what should I do? Add 5x. So y equals 5x minus 9. Now I take the other equation, and which letter am I taking out of the equation? I'm taking y out. So negative 15x plus 3y equals 8. And I'm going to replace the y with 5x minus 9. So negative 15x plus 15x. Uh-oh. Does that mean it's infinitely many? Because those two cancel. No. Not necessarily. 3 times negative 9 is negative 27 equals 8. Yes, my 15 and my negative 15 cancel out. But look at what's left. I have negative 27 on the left no and 8 on the right. That is not a true statement, is it? No. Which means I don't have infinitely many. I have no solution. No solution. Okay. So, so. All right. I have a couple more for you. Three more, actually. Not while I'm teaching, please. All right, so there's my two equations. This one's actually easier than the last one even. Because not only is one of the letters by itself, it's completely solved, isn't it? Yeah. So I know that in my answer, the y value is eight. So how do I find the x value? Plug 8 in for y up there. So negative 2x minus 4y equals negative 18. Notice I'm always substituting in in parentheses. That's important. Helps you with your multiplication. So negative 2x minus 32, 32. equals negative 18. What do I do now? Add 32. So negative 2x equals what? 14. Divide by negative 2. 
and x equals negative 7. Now, can I check my answer if I want to? You say yes. Do you know how to? Do the opposite. Remember those first problems we did yesterday? I have an ordered pair. If that is the correct answer, it should make a true statement in the first equation and a true statement in the second equation when I plug in the x and y values. Okay, so I can check my answer like that. Okay. All right, two more. y equals negative 6x minus 7, and y equals negative 5x minus 5. Now this is interesting because I have two letters by themselves, don't I? Well, I can still use the substitution. I'm just going to take y out, and I'm going to replace it with what? Negative 6x minus 7. So what does that mean I'm going to have? Negative 6x minus 7 equals negative 5x minus 5. What? So in other words, if y equals this and y equals that, then this has to equal that. It's not. So if you have three people, let's say we have Mary, Tom, and Lisa. If Mary has the same amount of money as Tom, let's say she has $10 and Tom has $10. Mary has the same amount of money as Tom. Let's say Tom has the same amount of money as Lisa. Can we then conclude that Lisa has the same amount as Mary? Yeah. That's what's going on here. If Y is equal to this and Y is equal to that, then those two things have to be equal. If x equals 5 and y equals 5, can't I conclude that x is equal to y? Because they're both equal to the same thing. That's what we're doing here, which is why we can set those two things equal. So how am I going to solve this now? I'm going to add 5x, just go to the left, just to be a pain in the tush, since you guys like going to the right. <laughs> A negative x minus 7 equals negative 5. It would have saved me a step if I had added 6 instead. But oh well. Now I'm going to add 7. So negative x is equal to positive 2. Divide by negative 1. And x equals negative 2. So in my answer, the first number is negative 2. How do I find the second answer? Plug it in. Does it matter where I plug it in? No. It actually doesn't here because I didn't change either of the equations. So I can pick whichever one looks like it has easier numbers. I'm going to pick the second one. Y equals negative 5x minus 5. And what am I plugging in for x? Negative 2. Negative 2. Well, negative 5 times negative 2 is positive 10 minus 5. So what does y equal? So my final answer is negative 2. Okay. All right, last problem. I want you to try it. It's just like that last one. Y equals 3x minus 23, and y equals negative 2x plus 17. Go ahead and try that one. So this one's that y equals and y equals thing, right? So I can say 3x minus 23 is equal to negative 2x plus 17. And what would I do to solve that? Add 2x to both sides. So 5x minus 23 is equal to 17. And then what would I do? Add 23. So 5x equals, was it 40? 
divide by 5, and x equals 8. So in my answer, the x value is 8. How do I find y? Plug it back into either equation. It doesn't matter. I'm going to plug it into the second one. Negative 2x plus 17, and I'm replacing x with 8. Negative 2 times 8 is negative 16 plus 17. What is negative 16 plus 17? 1. Now, if you would plug your 8 into the other equation, you would still get 1. Because 3 times 8 is 24 minus 23 is 1. So it doesn't matter where you go there. Okay? Any questions? All right. Your homework just posted on Google Classroom. Happy studying.